Hello, I'm Graham Booth, a watercolour artist from Northern Ireland, and I want to tell you today about the series of books from Search Press called Take Three Colours. It's exactly what it says on the title, only three colours, only three brushes, and with just those colours and brushes, we will be able to paint a complete painting. When I started painting 30 years ago, I can remember the problems I had doing it, and I wish there was a book like this along at that time. At that time, I thought ultramarine was an extreme marine sport. That's how little I knew. But with this book, we'll cut out the jargon. We'll give you everything you need, all the techniques, all the ideas for your completed painting. Each book in the series covers a different type of subject. So we've got flowers, we've got landscapes, and my book is all about snow scenes. Snow scenes are great fun to do, especially in watercolour. And with the three colours and the three brushes, I'll show you how. The three colours I'm going to use are ideal for snow scenes. The first one is cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is a lovely colour and it is just perfect for snow shadows. Great for snow scenes. The second colour is burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is an orange red and it's ideal for those little leftover autumn leaves that you'll find in, in winter scenes and also it mixes beautifully with the cobalt. I'll show you what happens when we do that later on. And the third colour is quinacridone gold. It's a very long name I know but it's a lovely golden yellow. We need a little bit of warmth in snow scenes. If we don't have warmth, the coolness tends to put the viewer off. So a little bit of warmth is always essential. Now it's easy to imagine that with only three colors, we're not going to be able to mix a lot of variety, but in fact, that's completely not the case. With those three colors that are basically blue, red, and yellow, we can mix a huge amount of colors, absolutely ideal for the winter subjects. I'm going to start with some cobalt blue. Pure cobalt blue is that lovely blue colour. But if I then start to add small amounts of my burnt sienna, look what happens. The blue changes to a soft grey. The grey becomes more neutral. And then eventually it will start to go towards the warmer side of grey. So we've got a nice warm grey. We bring it up to almost pure burnt sienna. Now these are great colors to use in snow scenes because they cover all those grays that you see in the snow. There's not a lot of color in snow scenes, but there are a lot of different grays. Now if we start with our cobalt blue again, and this time I'm going to add a touch of quinacridone gold. Look what happens, we get that lovely dull green. Still more blue than green. A Little bit more, and the green starts to strengthen. We get a brighter green. And remember, there's still some green visible in winter subjects, because we've got ivy and we've got conifers. The green gets warmer and warmer. Another more subtle mix is if we start with burnt sienna and add the quinacridone gold to it a little at a time. What happens is that the burnt sienna changes to a soft gold, which is ideal to get that little bit of warmth into our winter scenes. And of course, we can vary the strength of the mix. So we can begin with quite a dark gray. And by adding water to that, we will produce a light gray. This is very important because this is tone. Tone is the lightness and darkness of the color. And it is absolutely vital in watercolor. You can get your colors wrong in watercolor, but you can't get your tones wrong. The tones must be correct. They are the foundation of your painting. 
Along with our three colors, we're going to be using only three brushes. Now that might seem like a very small amount, but in fact, you don't really need any more than that. I have seen students with countless numbers of brushes, a whole box full of brushes. You're not going to paint any better with a box full of brushes. Try these three. First, I have my wash brush. This is just a simple, wide brush. It doesn't need to be wide, it can be round, but so long as it's quite big, because what we want to do with this is produce nice, big, wet, marks for our washes. So the wash brush will cover the paper in as few strokes as possible and that will be good for your painting. The second brush I'll be using is a round brush. This is roughly a size 10 to 12. This is actually a Chinese brush but any round brush with a good point will do. I'll be using this for things like the little shadows that you would get in snow. So we can start off with a thin line, get thicker, and get thin again. And it's also good for little things like distant areas of shrubs or trees at the end of a field. Our final brush is a sword liner. This is a rather unusual brush, but it's ideal for doing little winter twigs and things like that. If you can't get hold of a sword liner, a rigger will do much the same job. But it's really, really good for these little twiggy marks. It'll do the finest line, and with a little bit more pressure, it will do the broader branches. It just skips over the paper, making it very easy to get that winter tree look. 